Okay, how does it feel to run a two hour 21 marathon? I'm gonna let you know in this video exactly how it feels, but my marathon time went from four hours 25 to two hours 21 in just six years. And along the way, there was huge gains in, in the beginning. And then those gains became more and more difficult to get, but they were still there and still available. And still the journey continues. But what does it actually feel like when it all goes to plan and you run your fastest time? How much of that marathon should be really tough? I got this great question in the comments below. Did you feel in control and strong throughout your 221 marathon? Or did it ever feel like it might be slipping away? My marathon times went like this. First marathon, four hours 25. Second marathon in Barcelona, three hours 25, so an hour off that. Third marathon, Seville, two hours 37. Then it took me two years to do another marathon, and that was two hours and 24, again at Seville. Then I did my next marathon two years later in London in two hours 27. To me, that was a massive failure and I'll come to that in a second. And then I did my fastest marathon in London in two hours 21. I remember all my racing, but especially marathons and ultra marathons, which make up the bulk of my racing. But it's a special experience going to the UK, mainly because it's home soil, but also friends will show up. And at London Marathon, people are hammered at 10 o'clock in the morning. And so I remember my friends sort of digging through the crowds, which are like five, tenfold, and coming and shouting my name, which really gives you a lot of energy and inspiration to push on. And that's a special feeling. And so going to that first London Marathon, I had the expectation of running 219 something. I got into a group very early. It was a group full of people that I knew were well capable of running 220 or much faster. And some of them did that day. And I, I kind of got carried away with that group and we went through halfway in 68 minutes, which is probably my fastest half marathon. Uh, I've never raced a half marathon all out, but it's probably my fastest half marathon. And it was clearly too fast for me, but that had come from a lack of confidence in my training process and me thinking that it was way better to be in a group, similar to cycling, way better to be in a group where you do save some energy, but if you're running at a pace that you cannot sustain for long periods of time, then it's gonna be a problem at some time. And, and it was inevitable what happened. But when you're dealing with a torn hamstring and wanting to get to the finish because you're on home soil, you got a lot of time to think about and it feels like you're going incredibly slow and you have all that time to think about, to think, okay, how am I gonna correct this? How am I gonna get this right and come back next year and put this one right? And that's exactly what I did. And the next year when I came back, I'd done way more base training. So when I look at the hours of training, it's just 40% more. And then the key sessions, I'd put a lot more emphasis on and a lot more emphasis on running specifically 220. But also four weeks after that race, I had the 100K British Championships, which I went on to win in six hours 40, two, I think, or six hours 41, so four minutes per kilometer. So me racing and training at marathon pace, a lot of the time made that four minutes per kilometer seem easy, even though there was a hundred of them. And when I came back, I was just way more confident in my process. And so what actually happened was it was a, it was a windy day and it was, there was a big headwind. And so I got into a group, but I didn't get a good start. And this group was probably on for 223, 224, but I stuck with them. And whenever I tried to get out of the group and make and try to catch in the next group, which you can always see, and it seems easy, but then I thought the energy that I'm going to expend is way too much for me to get onto that next group. And therefore I'm gonna tuck in, do my work at the front and move forward. And then it got to halfway. And remember the year before we'd gone through in 68 minutes. This year I went through in 72 minutes. And all of a sudden I'm thinking, if I want to run two hours 20 for this marathon, I've got to run this second half in 68 minutes. So I was like a dog with a bone and I just took off at halfway and went for it. And when I look at photos from the second half of that race, it's just literally me gritting my teeth, going around corners like my life depends on it. 
and trying to get that 220. And that second half was a negative split by a minute or over a minute. And I came in in 221. And that got me on the England team, which I was incredibly proud of. But how long did it feel tough? Because I'd gone out so slow and I could have gone, if I would have gone out in 110, I would have been able to run a 110 in the second half or even faster. Um, probably 110, 110, would, I would have been capable of, of on that day. But it would have definitely made the second half easier. I felt like I had the handbrake on way too much in the first half. So when I stepped out and knew that I had to go for it, if I wanted to do what I came to do, then that took a lot of energy. And so that second half was all alone. But again, when you're running a negative split, you're passing a lot of people. So even sort of when you're coming into the last two, three miles of London Marathon, you kind of get into towards Buckingham Palace and it's just so many iconic moments. You're completely like a dog with a bone, chasing the next person, passing people, passing pros, passing, um, passing elite marathon runners that should have been running 208 that it's not gone right for. And, and that gives you a lot of energy and spirit as well. And so when I crossed the finish line, I think there was three of us very, very close uh, very close together, uh, Ben, uh, Jonathan, and, and, and me, and we all got on the England team and went to Canada. And, and so it's a great feeling, but how long did it feel tough for? I'd have to say that that second half, running alone on slightly tired legs, was it was more a mental game of how much do you want this? And that's what I always ask myself before a marathon, how much do you want this? How much does it really mean to you? If it doesn't mean that much, it's not going to be so much effort. It's not, you're not going to be able to dig very deep. You're not going to be able to suffer for very long. So it never felt like I was suffering. It just felt like I was empty in the tank, which, given the fact that I had the 100K just a few weeks later, wasn't the best tactic. The perfect tactic for that day was to go through and run an even split. But when it's windy in the first half and you've got to tuck into a group, that's the decision you've got to make. But again, it comes back to confidence. If you've got confidence in your process, in your training, and you know that that's gone to plan, then you can quite easily sit in, be patient, and then go when it's your time. So yeah, I hope you got something. It's a great question. I've never been asked that before. Uh, I hope you got something from it. And if you are getting something from these videos, please like, subscribe, and let me know what is your fastest marathon, and what is your dream time?